I'm afraid I have some bad news. My credit card was stolen. It wasn't stolen in a physical way. I still have it in my possession. The problem is that somebody copied information and then I think they actually made a copy of my card and used it in Europe. It was a very, very surreal experience. Remember, if you find this video helpful or if you just like it, subscribe to this channel. I usually share with you some tips on Turkey and uh, this time I actually shared some tips on travel. Subscribe, leave some comments, put some likes, don't be shy, it's okay. I decided to walk along the wa water and share with you some of my thoughts. First of all, every month at the end of the month I go to my bills and I pay them. Credit card is no different. August 31st, just a few days ago, I decided to do the same thing. I open credit card, bill, and I see huge bill. I know my bill would be a little bit more expensive than usual, but when I saw the amount, that was something else. I actually stressed out. I called the bank and asked them to check. And when you're overseas, it's not that easy. <laughs> Because I can tell you, it's a strange thing. And I will tell you all the ideas which I came up with. Because if it happens to you, you can probably watch this video and uh, prevent quite a few of those things happening. First of all, lesson number one. When you're traveling overseas, use the credit card which has pretty low limit. Limit maybe a little bit more than you expect to spend on that trip. That probably will prevent you from a lot of things. In all times, a few years ago, the bank would ask me to call and open the country which I'm traveling to. That way they know that if it's used in a different country, then it's fraud. Now, many banks don't do that, particularly big banks. They say, we will check it and we will call you if we see something wrong. This time they didn't see it. The bill was over $13,000 and it's in one month. There is no way I would be spending that kind of money on a trip. But that's what it was. First of all, when I called the bank, after the conversation and uh, review of the charges, they said they have to send me a code or they have to call me. And my phone was not set up for that exactly right away. They couldn't call me right away, so we had to do it a few times. Eventually it worked, but you know, the longer you continue working on this process, the longer you stress out. Lesson number two. Make sure that you have a very good phone connection and not only you can call, like through Skype or some other devices, but the bank can call you and text you. And when you go for a long time, roaming could be really expensive. I didn't really connect it. But that was not a problem. The first problem, as I said, it was a choosing high limit credit card. I shouldn't have done that. The other lesson which I learned, don't use debit card. No way should you use debit card because it could be copied in the same way. And I don't know if it's a new scam because I haven't seen it before. I've heard in old times people were copying magnetic stripe on the credit cards, but now there is a chip. So how did they do it? I don't know. I know that other people claiming that it could be done over online where they get the security cord, etc., etc., and that way uh, somebody can use your credit card in a fraudulent way. But in this particular case, from what I was told and what I saw, that people used it in the restaurants. And to use in the restaurants, you gotta have some kind of a physical card. Lesson number three. I would say that you need to check your credit card bill or charges probably every two or three days because you never know when it's going to happen. In my particular case, I think it happened quite quickly when they collected the data the way they do and they created a copy of my credit card. The thing is, it was quite easy to prove that it was not my charges because they were used in a different country. And on the same day, I was using that credit card in this country where I'm at right now. So that was clear. But nevertheless, it was still stressful. After a few hours, of me trying to connect 
and the banks trying to call me, we finally resolved the issue. They called me and they found that I am who I am, etc. So that one was clear. But here is another problem, which you may face too. Some of the banks will not send your replacement credit card to the country you're traveling. They can only send to the billing address, which another problem, it brings another problem. Uh, now you have to have a backup credit card and hopefully some cash because all sorts of things happen and better to keep them in the separate places. That way you will be somewhat protected or you will have a backup plan. So from what I found out, my bank, they're sending a replacement credit card to the registered address. That means that I will not get it in a while because there are some other ones. And what I found out, which was another ridiculous thing, I did not check that my backup card expires in September. So I'm okay to travel throughout September, but then I have to get my credit cards straight. And don't forget to subscribe, leave some comments, ask me some questions. I will be happily answering them and put some thumbs up. Don't be shy. It's, it's okay. Another tip. You see, you have some automatic payments for certain charges. Whatever they are, in your case, in my case, it was phone charges, like uh, the way the phone is paid, phone bill, and a few other bills. They were on a credit card which was stolen, which means that I need to go and update information on those bills, on those automatic charges. And sometimes it's not that easy, because if you travel in the country, which is not the country of registration, some banks will have filters and uh, you will have to have VPN just to get to them. And then they will have to send you the security code, which you have to receive through your email or uh, SMS or text, etc., which makes the whole thing complicated. What I've learned and what I'm going to do right away, I'm going to dedicate one card strictly to automatic charges. And I'm going to keep it at home so I don't have to replace it in case if this happens. This video is turning into a safety tips video. And to finish it, I will give you a couple more tips, which was from my own experience. I decided to stop because it's a long walk and I think you can hear me breathing pretty heavily because it's up and down all the time. A long time ago, my kids were young and we traveled to all inclusive resort. Somewhere I've read that you always have to wear comfortable shoes when you travel. Doesn't matter if it's a bus or train or airplane. And in Europe, it's no different than any other places. At that time, we as a family went to Dominican Republic. The bus, which was supposed to pick up from the hotel and to the airport, was delayed and arrived late. We literally arrived like at the time when the airplane was departing. Actually, I think the people at the gate had to call the airplane and say, hey, stop, there are some people coming. So we were running on a runway. It was quite funny, but that's what we did. And from then on, my kids learned the lesson. No flip-flops when you travel. If you sit at home, if you go for a comfortable walk, dress the way you want if you travel you got to be ready to run and that's important because the second story which I'm telling you we had to run that was at the time when we were traveling to the World Cup soccer that was not too long ago but a few years ago my son some of his friends who are pretty young pretty well fit we were traveling from one airport to another one and we had a connecting flight. So the airplane which we were flying in was delayed by an hour or hour and a half. That gave us 30 minutes from one gate at the airport to another and we still had to get out of the airplane, which was very short. The airport we arrived was huge. The good thing is we had another party, another guy who was flying from a different airport there and he arrived on time he literally was standing at the airplane and holding airplane he was standing with one foot in the airplane and the other foot on the gate and saying that we are running we were running and uh, honestly saying 
I was proud of myself. I wasn't the slowest runner. Running through the airport with your carry-on is a different task. But that was not a problem. We actually arrived, the airplane was delayed a few minutes, we made it. It was hard, but we made it. We were sweaty, we made it. The problem happened when we arrived to our destination, because we had one more connecting flight, and then we arrived to our destination. Most of the guys did not have their luggage. It was delayed, obviously. We were flying in, 30 minutes between gates, it was not transferred. And the tip which I want to give you, always have one set of clothes, and I'm not talking about just underwear and socks, but one set of clothes with you, because this kind of thing could happen. It happened to many other people. It happened to my family also in some other older times. The point is the same. You have to have at least one set of clothes, preferably two set of clothes. That probably will be even better, especially if you're traveling very far. Those are my tips for safe travel to Europe or anywhere else. And uh, don't get scammed. Check your balance frequently. See if there are some fraudulent chargers and immediately report them to the bank.